video? Like, don't have your brain so much. I'm not going to do it. 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 I'm not going to do
Have you all seen the Okay, so another example is that if there's any word or phrase on this paper that you don't understand, then that should have been written down. Okay, why did this group double one side? Because we had a viewer group at first, and then they were we were kind of on the same page. So. All right, we'll try today. We'll try today, but I see some mostly blank papers here that are not acceptable. I erased. Well, we we didn't have a mostly blank. This is technically blank. Yours is mostly blank. That's why I didn't know you out. You've had that written for a while. We were looking for the charts for a while. Yeah, we didn't have it. You're full of what? All right. Anyway, so yeah, this is pretty basic. Shouldn't be too difficult. You guys put a lot more detail. Well, excuse me, I haven't looked at everybody's paper, but there was a lot more detail. The first time we went over this, I understand that's because there was a lot more stuff we didn't understand. So not a big deal. All right, so maybe this will help some of you along. What are um, so what are the, some of the things that we don't quite understand yet that would help us better understand what's going on about these exoplanets? Okay, what are transit models? Okay, what are transit models? Good. What's the normalized flux, transit depth, and deep transit flux? Okay. All of the above. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. So normalized flux, deep trended. And it actually turned out to be raw flux. Yeah, uh, there's a, the right side of the letter is straight, like an A, it's just, it's hard to tell. I had to look it up, I couldn't find anything on the row, so raw was the next option. Um, what are the different shapes representing the Okay, good. So one of the other pluses. All right, what else? What's the difference in numbers for the DAB? Okay. All right, what else? What? Okay. I thought we talked about that, did we not? We did. Why were there so many Kepler? Name a microscope that's used for microscope. Microscope? Telescope. Holy crap, that'd be amazing. Why were there so many Kepler? We've done this before. Why were there so many Kepler? Because there's so many Kepler. Why were there so many Kepler? Because there's so many Kepler. Why were there so many Kepler? Well, how do, how do the stars get their names, though? The area, like, in the order that they're in. Yeah, the, the star gets their name by this telescope that discovers it. And so the number, you know, there could be 5,000 Kepler. There's 5,000 stars discovered by Kepler. So that's how they decide. Well, Kepler just needs to calm down and let somebody else find it. Well, there's, there's lots, actually. There's, you'll be learning a lot more over the next couple of weeks. There's TESS, there's WASP, there's, um, there's some that just have initials. There's, but yeah. Yeah, Kepler's mostly what we've dealt with, and you're going to see some others today. What's the report? What's the Oh, okay. How do you spell it? All right, yeah. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and get started on figuring these things out. So what you'll need to do is get a Chromebook. And some people didn't put it back correctly last time, which wasn't you guys. But anyway, get a Chromebook, open it up, and with your group, start working through and figuring out these answers and writing them down. Then we'll share the class if this is important for our understanding. Uh, everybody needs their own. Mr. Taylor, maybe is restaurant. Yeah. 
This will help us be able to talk intelligently about this stuff when we start talking to scientists. So, how would I look up why I'm going to show this? Like, how would I get that? It's all in your grass. Which one? Like, why are the measuring Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, when you get. Oh, I guess you're ready for that. Someone so, let's, let's look at this one. So, by measure differently, what do you mean? Like, uh, like okay, so so then what you need to know is what are the differences between uh, this and this, basically. Because these are the same. So you, what you notice know is why is. Um, so maybe find out first what transit depth means. That might help you out this. And then you can then later compare that. So why don't you focus on this, find out what that is, find out what this is, and then we'll see what, what we can uh, reason out of that. That makes sense? So find out what those two y axis means first, and then I'll come back. Yep. Well, what is it? What is it you want to know? And also, can you help me with it? Well, like, what is it? Yeah. 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 So I think of understanding the y-axis of the curve first will help. And then you figure that out. Better. How do you how do you what it is? No, I'm just gonna push this cold. Yeah, so it's like you're looking at the question you have to Wait, we read our report. The ones you have. I mean, if you want to do those two, that's fine. But focus on the ones you have first. Oh. If you need help wording it, so that's Google Home. I'd be happy to do that. Is there a question over here? Okay. So, um, first off, and you may not have been here that day, but we we realized that um, this. These six are actually the biggest gaps that you see here. Okay. And it's, so it's not actually a gap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
or normalized flux is that definition then you drop uh transfer as you have to do Boy, that could be right. 
Kepler 62F is uh, like an awesome new uh, variable. Investigate the questions on the board. If you had your own questions, then that's fine. All right. Yeah, so with that one, what you want to do is put in uh, the PGE and the number, and then it'll be more reasonable. Because that doesn't seem right. Wait, that's literally what it says. It just says missing the number. Those of you following ball joint doll, that's obviously not it. So put a BJD with the. I know what it means. You're not the only one who saw that, girl, Dan. No, I said I saw the girl. Yeah, of course you did. Mike is saying he's popping up. What is a left number for 2019? What? That's hard to say. That's popping up six times. What is the lucky number for 2019? Um, that one I don't worry about. That's a good question. I don't know. If you look it up, why do you guys have an allocation? I'm not sure. I think it's my note. Well, no. See, these zombies um, are actually all like this. You can really see from the diagram, these are all the colors that they show me here as the measurements. Okay, so it means the word is just like the loss of AP, the lucky numbers, the chart that you get. What's the numbers that you have to do? I don't know. You don't have to. You don't want to. These are just different ways to go through this explanation right now. Got it all? What is what? I Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, now, this isn't busy work. This is preparing your mind so you can talk intelligently to exoplanet scientists about this stuff. So knowing some of the basics that are, are essential for having an intelligent conversation. sucker to the person who can explain it so that we can understand it what the very centric uh, Julian day actually means <laughs> so if you're done answering your questions and you're willing to take on the, uh, the role of trying to explain that to people and you succeed I'll give you some suckers or something for the rest of the stuff I want to do. So we'll go ahead and work through this together a little bit. Um, so, but I still would like to volunteer to teach us about what it means. So what is BJD? It's very centric Julian date. And if anybody's willing to try and explain what that means, we're going to give it a shot. Oh uh, yeah, it uh, corrects the difference in first position with respect to the ferrocentric. And ferrocentric means relating to the center of gravity. Okay. So of the solar system, so they're talking about the first position and the gravity around it. So what does that mean? How gravity pulls around it. Okay. But what does B what does BJD have to do with that? Eight seconds. That is that is that person's real too, but yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh All right. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that. So transit depth. What's transit depth? Okay. It's just how much. It's just how much 
the light of an object is blocked by another object. So you've got this disk of the star, the sun, depending on what you're looking at, emits so much light and then there's something coming in front of it. The ratio of how much light is still out through or blocked is what transit depth is. So look at um, look at the either the six the six light curve chart or the three light curve chart real quick. So the six or the three, either one. So if I had more light, let's say Kepler, what's the top one? Kepler 17, and then some of you are looking at Kepler 1. So either way, whichever one's on the top, if I had more light <coughs> blink, blink, if I had more light being blocked, what would happen to those curves? How would the curves change? Yeah, I hear bigger, deeper. What is that? What do you mean? Wider? That's good. Anybody else want to want to share their their position on it too? I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm saying I want to hear if we have other ideas. Okay. So if if there's more light be, being blocked, then it will be a deeper curve. It'll be a bigger hole. Good. So if the light, if the planet's moving slowly, then the hole will be wider because it, it blocks the light for more for more time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So transit depth, how much light's being blocked, and ratio, um, and then there's a link to that. Raw flux is just the raw data. Show, look at where the raw flux is on the horizontal graph. The second chart we looked at. Look at the raw flux there. The top one with those weird lines. It's hard to make sense out of those weird, weird lines, and that's the raw data. That's the raw flux. When they are able to make more sense out of it by modifying it a bit, that's when you get the first detrended flux. The second part of that graph. Okay, so detrended flux, they've modified <coughs> the data enough or tweaked it enough that's more readable. Um, and that's so that's how we get what we see there. So in that chart, that second half of the chart, you see six uh, thick. Um, gaps, and each of those represent the six planets from Kepler 11. Now, when we make that data really readable, is when you get the chart with the six planets. Okay, so this is what this would be the uh, detrained flux as opposed or as zoomed in, I guess you'd say. So that it makes more sense to us. So, so that's that's the difference. Yeah, raw data. And then you have modified to make more sense data, trend flux, and then so on and so forth. All right, um, so look at one thing that wasn't brought up that we talked about in the other class. Look at the three graph chart real quick. What is the, uh, what is the bottom chart? What's the name of that planet? Yeah. 62F. What does that tell us? What does that name tell us? Obviously, the name of the of the uh, telescope that found it, but what else? What's the planet? Planet? Uh, planet yeah. So, how many other planets are there around that star? Sixty. Sixty. Or sixty-one. Come on, man. Uh, what? Five. Wait. Why did he say five? You said sixty. We have a crack smoker, and then we have one inside of that. There's only four in front of it. Well, why did you say five? Because they have what? Okay, yeah, so so the F means that there's a B, C, D, okay, and E. They, de they don't ever start with A, I can't remember why, but they always start with B. So when you see an F, that means that they have four or five other planets in front of it. Okay, so that's, that's a big deal. And actually, this is pretty cool. I'm going to chase Carter around here. Oops, wrong one. Oh, here it is. So here, here's Kepler 62. Okay? 
So the 62 we looked at was F. So here's the other, here's the other four planets ahead of it. That's pretty cool. Look how big they are compared to the Earth and Mars and whatnot. 62 C yeah. Yeah. would fit into our solar system pretty well. Actually, all those would fit into our solar system. But what's what's really cool about this is that two planets, these two, fall in the habitable zone of that star. The habitable zone means the area orbiting the star where it's warm enough or cold enough to have liquid water. So if we were going to visit a planet or a star system to see if we could find life, this would be a great one to go to. The problem is it's twenty, it's twelve hundred light years away. Why are they so far? Not even that. Okay. Why are they so far? So that means we would have to travel the speed of light for 1,200 years before we get there. And light travels 6 billion miles per hour. That's 186,000 miles per second. Exactly. So, so, so until we can go 10 times the speed of light, most of these places we got no chance of going to. Yeah. Gone? Yeah. We haven't left the solar system, man. The first we've gone is the first we've gone is people is the moon, and that's 350,000 miles away. What about just any sort of thing? Ship. We sent Voyager one. It's left the solar system, and it's been traveling for 40 years, and it just barely left the solar system like five years ago. 40. It took 40 years to get out of the solar system. No, 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 no. Yeah, it takes it takes uh, it takes light from the sun a couple hours to get uh, Pluto. Almost. Yeah. Whenever we look at other stars, that's right. We're looking at the past. So we're looking at looking at this star. We're looking at light that left that star 1,200 years ago. Holy crap! To Mars, yeah. We'll, we'll never leave our solar system, in my opinion. Like, we have to figure out how to go faster than the speed of light. Oh, we can still learn about these places. We just won't have a chance to go. And it's amazing what we're learning. That's what's cool. Uh, you'll, you'll see some stuff today. Actually, we may not see that part. They've uh, they discovered planets that are made of sapphire. They've discovered they've discovered um, diamonds. Diamonds too. Well, what actually was they thought it was diamonds, but they but the but the news reports got it wrong. It was actually sapphire. But they've also found places that rain rubies. Not like. Football. Actually, a ruby. You no, know, like little slivers of. But anyway. How do they know? Have they found like survival? Uh, we'll get into that. It's, that is a great question, but we'll we'll talk about that. Okay. So very good. We're gonna cut with that. So what I need you guys to do now is get. Uh, we're gonna use that same sheet of paper you're writing on. If you want to bring it, some, send someone with your charts to put them back up here. Um, you need that same sheet of paper you're writing on. Put a line or use the back page or something, and go ahead and get on Twitter. You get on the hashtag EXSS4. Yo. Okay. Was I here Monday? I was. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you want to run the bathroom real quick, like two minutes, like quick dump and go, then come back. Just be real quick. So we get into this. I need you on Twitter. Get on the hashtag. Um, What's that? What's that?
Nice. <laughs> All right, so once, as always, whenever you do a search on Twitter, what do you do after you do the search? What's the first button you oh. click? Latest. Latest, absolutely. Click latest. Okay. Now, um, a couple of things here. If you want to keep track of some of the tweets you see today, and you might, it's okay if you like like the tweet. Now, let me help you understand something. Liking a tweet doesn't necessarily mean you actually like it. So just because someone likes your tweet doesn't mean they actually like your tweet. It's also a way to bookmark something. Well, they got bookmarks. I know that. But the original, the original way to use likes on Twitter was also to bookmark something, to remind you of it later, to keep track of it, to track it, all that stuff. So now it could mean that they like it, but I'm telling you that so that you don't get trepidation or you don't freak out if you like someone else's tweet, even if it's on accident. It doesn't mean you like them. It doesn't mean you actually like the tweet. Uh, retweets are the same way. Retweets don't necessarily mean you support the idea. However, a lot of people will take it that way, so be careful what you retweet. If you want to see if someone responded to what you posted last time, click on notifications. It'll show up right here. It'll show you what you've, uh, who's responded to you about stuff if they did, okay? But no stress if they didn't. We'll get into more of that later. Anyway, so what I want you to do is do a search for the hashtag. Uh, click on latest. You must click on latest or else you're not going to see what's recent. Now, I, I want you to scroll down. Hold on, I'm not going to tell you how far yet. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to look at 20 tweets. Okay? And you're going to write a short note on your paper about what that tweet is talking about. Okay? I don't want you to copy it down. I don't want you to write even a full sentence. Now, sometimes you're gonna to come to a tweet that really has nothing to do with the conference, but it's still in the hashtag, that's fine. Just put a little line or write NA and then go to the next one. Okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be weird about it. Um, but let me tell you where I want you to start because it's starting to slow down for the day because they're five hours ahead of us in, uh, in Iceland. So what I want you to do is I want you to scroll down until you get to tweets that are from.